y'all. Today I'm bringing you five Spring Farmhouse Tear Trade Decor ideas. They're easy and affordable. In fact, um, the best part about it, I mean, besides the fact that the trout's super cute, <laughs> if I do say so myself, the best part about it is they're under $5 each to make. So, I mean, like super easy on the budget. In fact, almost everything was from Dollar Tree or could be found at Dollar Tree. So, um, again, what's not to love so let's just get into the video on this channel i love to share easy diys and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is lisa and this is our gray house at the beginning of the video i told you that these are easy and affordable and i told you that they were under five dollars each to make and that's because i'm participating in an open playlist challenge it's called the five under five dollars it's hosted by farm charm chic and shannon's crafty diys there's always tons of inspiration and awesome creators on this playlist. So be sure and check out the link that I'm going to have in my description box below, as well as the link to the host channels. And, um, okay, that's it. Let me, let me show you how my, my turned out so cute this time. Well, at least I think so. You'll have to let me know in the comments below what you think, but now let's get to the video. Okay. So at the beginning of the year, I committed to myself to use my stash molar in 2024 and i'm doing that with this first diy this is a little wood sign that i got from dollar tree and it's from easter but several years back it was in my stash i'm just removing the sticker on the back because y'all know i just don't like the stickers on the back and then i'm going to take a really really wet cloth wash rag and put that on top and let it soak and i let this soak for a long time and look how easy this paper is peeling off all the layers of the paper coming right off. Now, the wood, duh, or wood, whatever it is, it's not really wood, wood, I don't think. But anyways, it got, it obviously gets pretty wet and it can warp, so just kind of be careful of that. And if you're not gonna cover it up with paint like you see me doing here, then you might just wanna be careful about how it can kind of leave watermarks on it. But anyways, I'm painting mine and I'm using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And then I used my Cricut to um, print out a decal and it spells home. You can see it right there. I'm going to use it as a stencil though. So I reverse weeded it and took out all the letters. And now I'm going to put it on my little sign here. And I am using that little scrap piece of, uh, you know, with the vinyl comes on or whatever. I'm using that as just kind of like a little palette or whatever. And I'm going over the letters with the plaster color because this is gonna help it prevent bleeding when I go back in with this black color, okay? You, you see what I did? So I, you, you go over it once with the color, the base coat color, and then you go over it with the other color that you choose. And I'm choosing the letters to be black except for the O, and I'm gonna paint it with that pretty green color. Not really gonna see it, but just in case you can see any of it, I did want it to be green. And then I took off the stencil, and you have to weed out the, all the little parts and can you hear my cat? Okay, okay. Um, I think he's hungry. Anyways, then I was gonna try to get fancy with the um, washi tape and make like a little, you know, like design, kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna paint the frame in. I was gonna put a border. And, you know, it's working okay so far, but then when I pulled off the tape, I didn't really like how the corners, I didn't like how it turned out. I just thought it, it just it didn't feel right to me. So I went back in with my paintbrush and I filled in the spots and then I did all the way around the outside of the frame with that same black color. Now I'm doing colors that go in my home. If you like brighter colors or different colors, feel free to use that. Then I had this garland in my stash like literally forever. I've had it in my stash for several years and I'm gonna cut off a little chunk of that and I'm gonna use that to shape it to make the little O there. And see that black border that I put on it, it makes it look like it's got a little frame to it. I think it looks cute. And so just make a little circle there and we're gonna take the hot glue gun and put on some globs of glue and we're gonna just push that down, mash that right down. And there you have it. Tell me this isn't cute. Now maybe the H and the, could have been a little closer to the O and the M and the E could have been a little closer together, but seriously y'all, this is so cute. It was $1.25. Plus the extra materials, maybe I spent 75 cents on the vinyl, the paint, and the little greenery. I mean, for two bucks, what a cute sign. I've been seeing cathedral windows or these tiered, 
I don't know. I call them cathedral windows. Anyways, I've been seeing these on other people's tier trays. And I thought, you know, I can make that out of cardboard. I don't need to have a laser cutter because I don't have one. And so I probably could have cut this out using my Cricut, but I didn't do that. I just cut it out. I printed out the window and then I cut out the window and made it a template. And then I cut out some chipboard, like the stuff that's on the back of a notepad. I just used that to make my window. And I'm cutting out a bigger frame, a bigger window. And then you see this little thinner window because they're going to be layered together. And again, I'm just using, I call it chipboard. I, there might be another, it's like that super really, really thin cardboard. But like I said, it's like the stuff that's on the back of a notepad. Anyway, that's what I'm using. And I'm just using my little exacto knife cutting thing. And I'm also using scissors, obviously. <laughs> and that's what I'm using to cut out the little parts of the window. And we need to clean it up a little bit. I do sand some areas just to make sure they're smooth. No real reason for that. You don't have to do that. And I'm taking that little knife thing and just kind of cleaning up different spots. And I'm trying to you know, like see which way it looks best layered together. And then I take two different colors of brown. And this is for the bigger frame window part. And I'm just sponge daubing them onto there. I don't want one uniform color, but I also don't want to look like it's got polka dots all over it. So I'm just trying to blend it and smush it on there and paint it on there, but not one solid color because I want multiple colors because I want to give it dimension, you know? And then I take the thinner one and I use um, that chiffon color. The one I keep always forgetting. Anyway, I use that chiffon color, but then I also use some of uh, that lighter brown color to kind of, you know, distress it a little bit, I guess. And then I'm just taking some regular old school glue, but the clear kind, and I'm going to glue these two pieces together. And then I'm going to let it dry. And I, I use a that little house shape to let it dry for a while so it doesn't like curl up. Then I take some white chalk paint and I'm using my chippy brush and I am dry brushing, not painting, but I'm dry brushing a pretty heavy coat onto the window. I did glue a little tower tumbling block to the back at the bottom, but y'all, this turned out, it turned out just like I was hoping it would turn out. Now, I could have put another layer to make it a little bit more sturdy or maybe use thicker cardboard or something, but y'all, I love it. And you could put like, different color tissue paper behind the window to make it look like stained glass. It'd be so cute, y'all. So this project cost me almost nothing because I was using chipboard. But if you found a similar shape at Dollar Tree, which they have had them there before, it'd be $1.25. Plus the paint and the glue. I mean, honestly, those are such nominal fees. But again, so let's just say $1.25, $1.50 for kicks and grins. That's how much this cost me, but actually it was free. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. I had this little scrap piece of wood and you can find something similar at Dollar Tree, but I just had a, this in my scrap wood pile from my fence and I'm staining it with antique wax. <laughs> my daughter and I were talking and it's like every video, like eight times I'll say Waverly Wax in the color antique. Like, like I over say it, but some people don't know what I'm using and maybe you want it to know. But anyway, um, this <laughs> piece of wood is actually not, it wasn't cut straight and I'm the one that cut it. So, you know, it is what it is, but at the end there, it just kind of goes up a little bit. And so I made sure to use the flat side as the bottom and I'm taking a chippy brush and some black paint and I am going to do a pretty heavy coat. I don't know why I've been loving this chippy brush rustic look lately but anyways I have and I'm going to cover it really pretty well but I am going to be leaving some spots you can see some brown spots right there I cut out a decal using my Cricut and it has my last name and the year that we we're married and I think um I just add it to it and I'm going to stencil it on so normally I would stencil on black paint and then go over it with the white paint but I didn't mind if it bled a little bit. I didn't mind if it looked a little rustic or, you know, um, worn or whatever. It, it didn't matter to me. So I didn't do any prep work to it. I just did the white paint. Took off all of the little pieces and this is how it turned out. 
I really, really love it. The only thing I would change is just make the established 1999 a little bit smaller, but I just love it. And I love, I just, I love it. What can I say? I love it. <laughs> this piece cost me basically nothing except for the paint and the stencil, the, the vinyl stencil. But if you had to purchase this yourself, again, they sell similar sized wood pieces at Dollar Tree for $1.25. So there you go. Maybe 25 cents for the, the paint and the stencil vinyl or something. I don't even think you spent that much because really it's just such a small amount of product that we used. But hey, for a buck fifty, super cute sign for your chair tray. Hey y'all, me popping in the middle of the video. I hope you're enjoying it, by the way. Um, I hope you're liking how everything's turning out. But I wanted to tell you that I have a Facebook group, a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. And I'm gonna have a link in the description box below if you join. Please, please, please. I mean, join, I want you to join, but also like, like give a, a like on some people's projects, maybe leave a comment or something, encourage them because that's what it's all about, the community, building each other up and supporting each other. Anyway, links will be below. Here is another sign from Dollar Tree and it said life is better with cats and who can argue with that? Nobody, but I'm taking off that back sticker because that is what I do and I put a really damp, um, washcloth on it and I let it soak for a long time and look how easy this comes up the only thing I would caution you is if you're gonna I'm painting mine so it doesn't really matter but sometimes it leaves water spots or sometimes it, it could even warp your um, box a little bit or your piece that you're working on a little bit so just be careful of that I covered everything in folk art linen and I thought it was not it was like just a little too beigey for what I was going for so again took out the cheapy brush took out some white paint and I am dry brushing all over this piece and I'm loving how it's looking y'all not even gonna lie then I cut out a decal it says party of two and this time I'm not gonna stencil I'm just gonna add the decal and that's how it turned out this party of two sign did cost me, let's see, $1.25 for the sign. And again, it's really hard for me to calculate how much I spent on paint or, or the vinyl or anything like that because I buy those and it lasts me for a reasonably good amount of time. But again, let's say $0.25 cents for material, extra materials. You're looking at $1.50 for a really cute sign that's going to look awesome on my tiered tray. Last but not least, I'm doing a cutting board. I tend to like cutting boards. I tend to like book stacks and so, or tiered tray decor in general. Anyway, I'm staining it, this with antique wax and Waverly wax in the color antique. There, I said it, I said it, just in case you didn't know. But I normally paint it on and then wipe it off with a scrap damp piece of cloth. And it works well for me. And so I do all sides, all over, front, back, top, bottom. You see the drill. And then I'm gonna be adding a piece of this faux leather. If you don't have faux leather, you could use ribbon, you could paint on the thing. I mean, whatever your heart desires, but I'm gonna put a piece of faux leather right there and I'm gonna be using thumbtacks to kind of, you know, tack it down, but not really, but kind of tack it down. Then I thought I'm gonna to try to like um, rust these up. So I used some hydrogen peroxide, some salt and some vinegar and put them in there and it did start to rust, but not really. So I added, I just kind of put them on a napkin here and I'm using several different colors of brown paint and kind of rust colored paint to give me the same effect. And while I let that dry, I'm cutting out a stencil and it's just of a plant. I don't know what kind of plant it is, but it's just a plant <laughs> and I'm going to stencil that on. But first, before I apply the stencil, I've got to figure out exactly where I'm putting everything and then I'm going to hammer in those little thumbtacks. I've already did like a little pilot hole with a nail so they would go in a lot easier and I'm just going to position those in. I'm going to put that little napkin on top so it doesn't mess up the paint job I just did, hammer those in, and then I'm going to apply the stencil where I want it. So once I have it positioned where I need it, I'm gonna take some white chalk paint and some chiffon chalk, oh no, the linen, I think I'm using linen and white. Anyway, I'm just stippling it on with a little sponge brush that I got from Dollar Tree. Now they sell these cutting board shapes at Dollar Tree. Mine hasn't had any in a while, so I cut out my own, but um, you get the same effect. Even if you just did this on a sign, it would look super cute this way. Then I'm just trying to cut off the excess of that 
faux leather. I got that faux leather, leather from Hobby Lobby, if I didn't mention it. And then I just take a little sharp pair of scissors and cut off the rest. Look, I'm telling you, I purposely used the side that has a little crack in it just because I wanted it to look even more rustic. And I did um, drill a hole in the top. I didn't put any jute twine at this time, but maybe I'll do that in a bit or maybe I'll put some leather or something I don't know the cost of this little cutting board was nominal to me because I used a scrap piece of wood to cut out the cutting board but if you'd bought it from Dollar Tree that's $1.25 and then the faux leather again faux leather the stencil the paint the antique wax let's say another quarter a dollar fifty not a bad price at all I love how this turned out I just really really love how it turned out and here are all the pieces that I created in today's video. And when I say I love them, I'm telling you I love them. I have some more coming up in another video that will be coming out in another week or so that will be going all on my tear tray. I'll show you how I styled everything together and how it all comes together. But I'm just really, really loving the uh, projects that I made today. Thank y'all so much for watching my video today. I really do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I hope you enjoyed the, the DIYs that I made as much as I did. I think they've just turned out so cute. Um, I don't even have a favorite because I just like the, like the, all of them together. Anyways, um, what else? Um, the host channels and the playlist are down below. Don't forget about that because you want more inspo. You know what I'm saying? Like who doesn't want inspiration, right? And then um, if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on TikTok or Instagram um, or something like that, my handle's our great house, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.